So, this is just a little gardening video uh, update on one of the garden builds that I've done that I've shown you in other videos on uh, this Crescent Farms property. I wanted to show you the inner beds. Um, the owner said that I should give you an update. Here is, uh, you know, all these are, are her planting schemes that she's come up with and different, uh, different ideas and, you know, Oh, about four or five years now of, of successive planting and working on the landscapes and stuff and successes and failures so uh, this is where we're at I mean we've got it pretty well vegged in these are all poppies and stuff that are going off um, this is some of that laser line in action that I've showed you in other videos it's about how much it drips out of both holes there and this bed is just a combo um, little sprinklers and then two strands of this laser line that basically lay all throughout the thing and see there's one um, tall sprinkler another sprinkler here this is a, a purple Brazilian verbena which is just coming out those are super hardy these are all lantanas you know the red poppies they come back from seed and uh, yeah, so we have just simple battery run timers on here, although there's valve boxes and, and solenoids and everything here if, um, you know, a central brain wanted to be put on. But I wanted to show you how simple it is. You can run these black lines, you know, it's about $30 for about 50 to 100 feet, depending on what store you go to of this line. These are your little adapters, everything pushes together. And uh, here's another one that we're going to go put on out front. And these run on a 9 volt battery that lasts a really long time. And they're simple. It's how many uh, hours you want to run for 2 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and how often do you want that manually right when you're standing there so you can use it. Where every 6 hours, every 12 hours, every 24 hours, all the way up to every 7th day. And then you turn it on and you leave it and it turns on for you like that. Now, like I said, there are a thousand types of ones that go in the valve boxes, which we have here. Um, but these are just simple interior beds, and if you wanted to keep your stuff green, you know, you can go out and lay down a coil of this, buy packs of these, it's all pretty self-explanatory. Anybody in any garden department can show you the little pokers that you need, and uh, just don't be afraid, you know. Um, experiment, start on one little strand at a time. Um, on places that you've been watering by hand for 10 years at a time, go ahead and put a line in there, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay. Here's this next bed, so the amaryllis, the naked ladies are laying down, these are a tall canna lily that's coming up, um, the irises that you saw earlier have come in waves all the way down this, the taller lantanas are going off, all of our hollyhocks are standing up on end, so these will be a huge tall display. I'm kneeling down, that's taller than me now. Um, there they are again. And then the irises are a good bulb because instead of turning yellow, they stay blue like that, even their fans. So, in that same line, divulges and goes around that interior bed in zone one. And this one comes out, and uh, you can see all this is stuff that I have drips in here. And the thing about these drips is that they're measured, so you know exactly how many. So it'll say five gallon or 0.5 gallons per hour. That's a half a gallon every hour, you know, and all the way up um, to like two gallons an hour, I think. These are triplet daylilies that are going to go off. They'll green up and blue up now that they have water back on them. Um, here is more hollyhocks going off and then this is this front bed install that you saw and it's a little scant still but um, it's been very hot and dry out here and everybody's still alive and in bloom so that's not always the easiest thing to do and everything that we lay down here's the fields of poppies that I promised you so you can see it's basically just bark these are not weeds these are little clovers bees actually use those a lot and they're another hardy thing that'll self seed and uh, hog stuff out. And we have little purple lupins mixed in here. Look at the ground. Not much. Just bark. This is that, no joke, four inches deep bark. Here's my hand. Across the whole landscape. Thank you Napa County for bringing all that in after the fires. And uh, 
blue bachelor buttons these seat out and you can see how many heads they're almost like a thistle and it goes all the way down and all the way across so and we have a row of cherry plums so it's tall tree wanted to bring it down to cherry plums though we'll keep them a little bit taller than that but harvestable because they're actual fruit white mulberries they're an actual fruit but we're gonna let them go taller red white mulberry and so you can see we're gonna do the whole thing it'll be olive big tall mulberry to shade this whole deal little shorter tree big tall mulberry two shorter trees big tall one that's already there so placement is a big deal too remember how they're gonna look when they get bigger if all these were the same size it might be a little close unless you want to hedge your plums you could do it but we opted for these will fill in the low and those will fill in the high should have like a 14 foot usable hedge with high you know light demanding trees and shade tolerant fruit trees under it like I said, it gets to be 110 degrees out here consecutively for, you know, 14 days at a time. And then it'll drop down to a nice 90, you know. And that's how we hold out. We're on the top of some really arid mountains in a recovering fire zone. So this tree growing up, providing some shade that would be there in a natural forest, um, will actually shelter the other trees. So there's a lot of species that commingle like that in the layers and can benefit. Just like the shade of this building coming over here, you can see things that were withered in the full sun stand up. So that could be the shade of a taller plant in a canopy. Here's a great example. These are two of our, I let these slip in from out here. You can actually see how many there are. And uh, no grasses and stuff. So that's why you pick out those occasional grasses. It gets to be less and less. Right here you have both types of poppies that you'll run into. That's right, both types. So there's two plants here. Here's the base and actually probably like four plants here. But importantly, you can see the two colors and they are actually two different varieties. So these darker orange, your classic California poppy. These, which I think are just a little more beautiful, they're smaller. I think of them as more wild and they're called a frying pan poppy. And uh, that's just a detail to notice when you're walking around, they're not all like that sometimes they're like that and this one has mingled together so yes that happens outside the paintings and then everybody else even though you're small just came out of six packs and our olive tree is doing so good that she went into bloom so the whole thing's covered in blooms first year and who are you we have no idea are you a glassy wing sharpshooter And you can build yourself fun little kits here. These are all the different types of sprayer heads, dummy plugs for when you don't want to use a hole anymore, tees, that's what you use to push together and join your different lines and make a tee and something. Um, they're just tubes. And these are just straight adapters for pushing into the big line and then hooking your littler lines up to. Um, different risers if you want to go taller all that um, I'm no expert I just started teaching myself I get stumped sometimes and we're just gonna take this and hook it in line here sorry just got its battery in it just a, a 9 volt they give you industrial batteries that you can buy yeah I might there's our little screen on this one I might actually get an adapter on either here or here and bring that down so it's at a more comfortable angle but that'll work but for rain purposes I think we should probably flatten it out but to hook it up and use it today this is what we are going to do same here Yeah, we're going to make sure that one's turned off so it doesn't spray us in the face or the crotch. Open that one up because that's the only one we're using. Uh, this should swivel around on here. Yeah. Actually, just like for now, that's the best angle we can get. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. 
And the cool part about this water is that it comes from a spring in the side of the mountain uphill. It uses all gravity to come here at about 45 pounds of pressure. We're going to push the on button. There we go. Just had to think about it. That happens. Remember, that was electronics. Give it a second. And now it's running. All these trees are hooked up onto it. And the new olive trees hooked up onto it. So that just runs down that line that you see going there and they make tees for that and everything too so you could run it out through the bed. I used a smaller eighth inch line here and I brought it out to a tee that's under the rock. And it comes out on either side here. I duplicated that there, held it down with some ground staples and you can actually top dress over that. If you're someone who does mulches and stuff, that's fine to then hide it. It actually duffs in naturally and um, out of the sun it lasts a little bit longer that's my hint because it's plastic it'll wear out but not as quickly as some plastic is this a leak yes we have a leak here that's going to kill pressure in our whole system and this one actually runs a long ways out so we're going to grab a dummy plug thus called that because they just plug and you have a big hole or a little hole and See the hole there? So somehow something got ripped out or something, but we just and you can use pliers if you need to. Um, I think that we need to because not only are my fingers slipping, but it kind of hurts to push that hard. So we just grab that like that. And you can turn it off so it's easier for you. I kind of like to do things off camera so it works. I kind of like to do things with the water on on a hot day if you can. This is working really good. Huh? I'm going to get a tighter grip on there and farther down. And with the water running that way I can see what's going on. Now that was supposed to be easy but that's what I did is I pushed it down on there until it popped in and now that's off and we don't have a leak and we can walk all the way down the line check it all of these need individual base drips so we're not spraying on the flowers and stuff and always blanching them out um, and that's easy enough we have this line in the back that's devoted just to this run of trees that you see here and stuff and we can use uh, these little eighth inch I call them spaghetti lines to just run out and you put about a half a gallon an hour emitter a 0 0.05 emitter you can buy like a bag of 50 of those and spools of the little line and you just cut it to length hold it down with ground staples all that I'll try and show you that next time I do a full build today I'm just getting the main uh, things that we have hooked up online so that it's autonomous which is the nice part and I wanted to show you that um, if you don't have white pipe valves and stuff, if you just have hose bibs sticking up in your yard, you can still go get these coils, get these pieces that hook to garden hose size stuff. Get Now let's take this off manual. And we'll set this to um, every seventh day. Now let's set this right now, it's kind of hot. To every third day, let's have it going for uh, half an hour because it's run on a spring now that's what I was saying about this one is that up the mountain from here there's a crazy spring that comes out so if you think about that the water runs out of the spring down pipes we have it just tapped so it runs into a central core when the water pushes up it's like a straw and it spills downhill that runs downhill into a uh, large green holding tank um, which constantly overflows because the only time we're using it is when these lines turn on and it's just to do these beds and stuff in the vegetable gardens and everything and uh, then it turns back off and that tank fills up and overflows like a little spillway but it's at a pipe and I just ran that back over to the seep in the hillside where the natural spring had always gone down so I borrowed it for about 10 feet ran it into a green tank that's kind of like a reservoir which this straw is in and then let it go loose and it just sits there and runs back down the hill like it always has so basically when this clicks on we're borrowing from that spring to seep into all these beds for a little while and then it clicks off and then just flows back down the mountain and uh, 
never even touched the tank. I mean, I don't want to disclose the gallons, but a lot. And so, yeah, pretty awesome. It's good to have a spring. And that's the way to do it too, instead of hoarding it up and hoarding it up and hoarding it up, we found a way to just tap it and basically, literally now, that every third day for 30 minutes we'll release a little line that thick down the base of these trees from that spring about a quarter mile away. And that was a fun thing to build and take part in. So, um, now the true test. We leave this on overnight, make sure there's no leaks, anything else that blows out, and uh, keep your eye on it. That's all you have to do after that. Okay. This one's short. I'll see you somewhere else. Old lines that got melted in the fire. Still in hidden spots, you can see the evidence. New lines. This property is so fire safe now. We're going to put a T in. I just wanted to show you how easy all this is. And then that's going to give us this whole other line that runs across. We're going to hide it, attach a bunch of eighth inch lines and a uh, watering system for a bed. So. I'll bring you along, but I won't babble at you much. This line already has water in it. Be prepared. Okay, so now we've got that attached. We're up underneath the bridge. And I'd like to kind of hide this line so we don't want any immediate kinks in it or anything. It would be nice. Let me see here. As usual, it's different working with the camera. Okay. Should be a bit better. Now we're gonna. Tuck this up under here. There's one little bolt. Ah, that would be like the perfect hole. I don't know if you can see that. We don't even need to put a staple in. This is all hidden underneath the bridge. Put this next one up here. Tuck it back. Work this around the corner. Let's see. Oh, look, that's like the perfect hide. It slides. Perfectly under that plate of steel. Secure. And this line comes around and heads up to the bed, and I'll show you that. See, we got all these flowers in this bed that need water. No water to Here's the line that we brought around live. We're just going to lay it in. The little finger rod is barely buried. We'll top dress over it. It'll get hidden. We gotta put some ground staples on it to hold it down. And here's the ground staples that we're gonna use to hold the hose down. I'm gonna do that. Keep this position. Sorry, little flower. So that none of your little lines in position get ripped out. And these are some little drip lines that I prefabricated. So they're just a little spray emitter. And you press some eighth inch line on there. I'll show you the other end. I have some straight barbed emitters. That's what that is. It just pushes on there. People who have seen all this, fast forward. 
put one of those in the end of each of these. That's what's going to stab into the bigger line. The barb on there is going to jump for little stuff. They'll clog it up. Like anything, try and be clean. Everything presses together. Um, you might want to use gloves and pliers if you have tender fingers. It's okay. Everybody can do this. He's got to get different tools to get it done. And then um, these are going to be for different lengths. I know the line is close. So we'll just coil it around a little bit. And that uh, allows me to make some of them ahead of time. It's not always the best idea, but I have so much to do. I will use them all. And here's our smaller staples. Those will hold these down in position, as well as our little ground spikes. And then these are adjustable. You can turn them this way and that way to make a bigger or smaller spray. So I'm going to go poke those in out here. We're going to place this one right here. So we've just put the little barb in the hole with our little tool. Poked it in. And then uh, I like to get them all in. And then go adjust the um, pressure on each one after you have all the holes made in your line. Because each one drops and raises the pressure. So if you try and adjust your pressure as you go along, each new hole that you make in your line will um, change the pressure on each one. And that's the other important thing to remember is on each run there's a maximum amount of water pressure that you have. And that will determine how many different emitters you can have going at one time. And that's how many lines you have to break off with on and off valves and make them take turns. So. That's an important number. Let's do the next number. I'm no expert in all this. And that's the point. Is I just want to show you that uh, you can muddle your way through this by knowing some simple rules. You know, I got to work as a landscaper and get taught the different uh, techniques and stuff and see it all. So we're going to use a short one for this one because it's right here. Same thing, I'm going to come off on the side of the line that the plant is on and not out of the top because then our line would stick straight up and it come out of the side so that it lays nice and flat and hidden in the bed and I like to pinch it as we poke in and you have water, that's enough push the new one in, it's in, that's all there is to it and there's water coming out and I just anchor that in a good spot pin it down along the U, and then we can actually bury the line a little bit. Um, if you keep your plastic a little concealed, it won't get so destroyed by the sun. Okay, and I'm doing the big shrubs out here, so this is to hit our little cystus. All these have been surviving just in the dirt, and then the wood chips as a cover. Here's another spot where I've put down all these wood chips, and these are a mix of a hundred different trees. I did not measure the pH. I just take truckloads of wood chips. And the thing about that is that if you're not dealing with all one type of tree ground up, if you're getting them from a tree company or something that's done several different types of tree and brush, then the uh, acid and the base will all mix together like it does in nature and just make regular dirt. You probably could get something that was too unbalanced for certain plants if you went with only evergreen or something. But even then, it's like the second it gets chipped up, it's okay. It becomes benign. And you can see how many different species in all my videos I plant in it. I've never had one suffer from the bark except for in case there was uh, too high of a fungal bloom as a result of giving them too much organic material to eat and their numbers become so high they actually start competing with your plants. So then you go get molasses or something and pour it in the ground and feed your fungus and they don't have to compete. So, still have moisture down here. And these are all baby poppies so it'll just get thicker and thicker.